Nike is the world's largest sportswear brand, earning around $100 million daily. World-class athletes like Ronaldo and Rafael Nadal use Nike products. But can you believe that the one who built Nike was a failed athlete himself and started his business by selling shoes in the trunk of his car? This is the story of Nike's founder, Phil Knight. Phil Knight was born in 1938 in the small town of Portland, America. From a young age, he had a passion for running, and his ultimate dream was to become a great athlete. Throughout school and college, he won numerous races. Alongside his running career, Phil pursued his education and completed his MBA in 1962. Despite his desire to continue running, one morning during practice, he faced a harsh reality. After dedicating his youth to running, he became one of the best athletes in his state, but he could not reach national or international levels. At 24, he realized there was no further scope in athletics for him. With a heavy heart, he accepted that his athletic career had reached its end. Though he failed to become an elite athlete, he still wanted to stay connected to sports in some way. Phil was deeply attached to his running shoes like every runner. This led him to the decision to enter the shoe business. He recalled that during his MBA, he had written a detailed research paper on the running shoe industry. In his research, he discovered that Japanese camera companies had disrupted the American market with their high-quality, low-cost products. He theorized that Japanese shoes could similarly disrupt the U.S. market and challenge giants like Adidas and Puma. Though starting a business based on his college project was risky, Phil saw no other option and decided to import Tiger brand shoes manufactured by Onitsuka Tiger from Japan. Phil gathered his savings and flew to Japan, and after reaching Japan, he fixed an appointment with Onitsuka's office. A boy who was very shy and introverted by nature set out to partner with a big company. Moreover, when asked for his company's name, he spontaneously thought of the blue ribbons he had won in races and said, Blue Ribbon Sports. However, this company didn't exist yet. The meeting progressed with Phil explaining his shoe business idea. In the end, Onitsuka Tiger was so impressed that they wanted his company, Blue Ribbon, to sell Tiger shoes in America. Phil gave them his address and asked them to send some of Tiger's shoe samples. There was no limit to Phil's happiness. He transferred money to Onitsuka for the shoe samples and returned to America and waited for the samples. Four months passed and he didn't receive any shoes. When he contacted the Onitsuka office, they assured him they would arrive soon, but they didn't. It had been almost a year since the meeting with Onitsuka. By then, Phil had almost lost hope when a notice came from the customs. There were 12 shoes from Japan. After collecting the shoes, Phil unboxed them and showed the shoes to his college coach, Bill Bowerman, and told him about his business plan. Bowerman liked the shoes so much that the very next day he offered Phil to be a 50% partner. Phil was quite surprised by this offer. Bill Bowerman throughout his coaching career was obsessed with one thing, and that was shoes. He had been experimenting with shoes for years and had become an expert in shoe design. His full focus was on making the shoes lighter. He would often take away the shoes of his students without asking and would return after tearing the shoes, performing minor modifications for several days. The athlete's performance would massively increase after his modifications. Bill Bowerman was also a genius coach and a natural leader. He was a godlike figure for Phil and the rest of the runners. And today, the same godlike figure wanted to become Phil's business partner. It was a no-brainer. They shook hands, and now both of them were 50-50 partners. The same day, Phil wrote a letter to Onitsuka and asked for exclusive distributorship rights to sell the Tiger shoes in Western USA. He also placed the first order of 300 shoes at a cost of $1,000. This time, shoes came on time, and Blue Ribbon got exclusive distributorship rights for West USA. This is what Phil was waiting for. He immediately quit his accounting job so that he could focus completely on business. He stored the shoes in the basement of his parents' house. This was the office of Blue Ribbon now. It was time to sell shoes now. Phil requested many sports shops to sell the Tiger shoes. Everyone refused to sell Tiger shoes in their shop. Phil didn't have the money to open his own shop, so he came up with an idea. He'd fill the trunk of his car with shoes and started reaching wherever there was an athletic competition. He spoke to coaches, athletes, and spectators and started presenting his shoes. Phil had tried sales job before but was not successful. This time, the response of the customers shocked Phil. 
His shoes were selling like hotcakes. He'd been an athlete himself and so understood athletes' problems very well. Hence, he was easily able to convince customers that Tiger's shoes were best for them. In just two months, he sold the first shipment of 300 shoes and placed an order for 900 shoes this time. But his total earning was just $2,000 and the total cost of the order was $3,000. So Phil asked for a $1,000 loan from the bank for the first time. Looking at the strong business of Blue Ribbon, they approved the loan and Phil finally had a career that he was enjoying deeply. He had a trusted partner like Bill Bowerman in a product that was selling by itself. In short, Phil was having a great time. But then there comes a twist in the story. A wrestling coach wrote a letter to Phil. He claimed that he had just returned from a meeting with Onitsuka in Japan and that Onitsuka had given him rights to be an exclusive distributor for the whole of America. The coach ordered Phil to immediately stop the Tiger Shoes business. Only two months had passed since Phil started the business and was on the verge of closure. He immediately wrote a letter to Onitsuka asking for clarification, but there was no response from them. So Phil decided that he would go to Japan and confront Onitsuka. During this meeting, Phil made it clear how he had been wronged. He presented his argument for strong sales and explained future plans. The next day, he directly met the company owner, Mr. Onitsuka. He instantly trusted Phil. Mr. Onitsuka said that Phil's passion reminded him of his youth days, and he gave Phil Western USA distributorship again. Phil was relieved, but the problems were far from over. Blue Ribbon achieved $8,000 in sales at the completion of the first year of business. They hired a salesman named Jeff Johnson to expand in another city. Jeff's specialty was that he had also been an athlete like Phil. He was extremely passionate about his work. And that's why sales reached $16,000 in the second year of business. That means it was going to be double, but surprisingly, this became a big problem for them. Phil wanted to grow very fast, so as soon as one shipment is sold out, he'd double or triple the order. They had to reinvest their entire profit for payment of the order and also had to take a loan from the bank. Basically, after one year's business, Blue Ribbon had incurred a debt of thousands of dollars and the cash flow was negative, due to which the bank refused to give him further loans and suddenly there was no cash to run the business. Phil had to arrange for the money somehow for Blue Ribbon's survival. Hence, he took up the job of an accountant at PwC. He started investing his entire salary in the business. On the other side, his partner Bill Bowerman was working to improve Tiger Shoes. Bowerman realized that Americans' bodies are longer and heavier in comparison to Japanese. That's why their shoes should also be different. Bowerman tore Tiger Shoes too and conducted many experiments. A turning point came when he combined the best features of different Tiger Shoes and designed an ultimate distance training shoe for Americans and named the shoes Cortez. Onitsuka started manufacturing Cortez shoes and the shoes became super successful as soon as they entered the American market. Due to Phil's management and Bowerman's shoe design, Tiger Shoes were one of the top shoe brands in the entire America in the next five years. Sales touched 1.3 million by 1971 and the business was doubling every year. With this, Phil quit his job and joined Blue Ribbon full-time. It was going absolutely perfectly when a huge blow came from Japan. Seeing the success of Blue Ribbon, Onitsuka felt greedy. They wanted to keep the entire income from Tiger Shoes for themselves. They gave an ultimatum to Phil that if he doesn't sell 51% of Blue Ribbon's stake to Onitsuka, they will give the distributorship of America to someone else. Phil felt quite shocked and hurt. It was a big fraud. Onitsuka had crossed all limits by talking to them about buying Blue Ribbon, and so Phil took the biggest decision of his life. Phil gathered his team and told them that this was the moment which they all were waiting for. The time to sell someone else's brand was over. Now is the time to create their own brand. With this, he broke the partnership with Onitsuka and decided to manufacture shoes of his own brand. The first step was to create a new logo. Phil wanted his brand's logo to awaken a sense of running, a sense of motion, and a sense of victory. Plus, the logo must fit the side of the shoe. He hired a graphic design student to design the logo. After a few days, the student showed multiple designs to Phil. Phil didn't quite like any of them, but since he was short on time, 
he selected a random design for just $35. Now it was time to choose the name. Phil and his partners thought of hundreds of names like Bengal, Falcon, and Dimension 6. But the name selection was proving to be more difficult than the logo. All the names seemed very boring. One night, Jeff Johnson had a dream. He saw himself in a Greek temple. There, the goddess of victory appeared in front of him. Her name was Nike. Jeff got up at midnight and wrote a letter to Phil that if any name is perfect for their brand, it is Nike. The next day, Phil read the letter and decided that the name of their brand would be Nike. On May 30th, 1971, Nike's first batch of shoes officially entered the market. Even though the shoes were similar to Tiger Shoes, Nike's strategy was innovative. They started sponsoring big athletes. The first athlete they sponsored was Steve Prefontaine. His charisma brought Nike into the eyes of America. A few years later, Nike signed a basketball player, Michael Jordan. His signature shoes, the Air Jordan, disrupted the market. Nike started manufacturing products according to athletes' needs, and athletes started endorsing Nike. Nike's sales grew 20-30% every year and kept doubling and tripling. Nike soon surpassed Reebok, then Adidas, and became a global leader in sportswear. Phil Knight's journey teaches us that to succeed in any business, the idea doesn't matter as much as execution. As he said in his book, Shoe Dog, let everyone call your idea crazy, but keep going. Nike's tagline, Just Do It, embodies the spirit. If you enjoyed this story, watch the next video for more insights.